<laughs> Holy What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys haven't already, please hit the subscribe button for more TSX build. Woo! So in this video, we're gonna be installing the TD Man's rear upper control arms. So it's gonna be fairly simple, just replacing it, just a few bolts, and I gotta adjust the height sensors bracket. So I'm gonna be doing that. I'll show you guys in a bit. Just join along, and I'll show you guys the TD Man control arm and how I'm gonna install the height sensor bracket. Let's go. The reason why I like the TD Man rear upper control arms is because it's fully adjustable. I don't know how many degrees of camber we can achieve. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be more than enough for our setup. I think TD Man is the only company that makes the rear upper control arm for the CU2. I might be wrong. Correct me in the comments down below if I am. Just let me know because I'm interested because this is the only ones that I knew of. And craftsmanship is so nice. The paint to the nuts and the fittings, so good. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how I'm gonna be mounting the height sensors to the arms. It's just gonna be a shaft ring mounted to it. Of course, I didn't wanna go drill into the Tita Man arm because that's gonna be just ridiculous. All right, I'll show you guys. So here's the concept that I came up with. So on these two bolts here, it's gonna be mounted to the chassis. And then on this side, it's gonna be the outer. So the height rod would be installed like this here. The rod is gonna be connected to the shaft collar. When it airs down, it should move with it too. So now I gotta go tap into this shaft collar. You can already see the problem, this hitting here. So we might have to install it like so, like this guy. So now I got the shaft ring on the vise, made a marking where we're gonna drill. So now we got the tap and die. It's asking for oil, but I don't currently have any oil for lubricant. Just go slowly, quarter turn, and then you back out. That should be good. So let's see if our screw is gonna go in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So this is the concept that I was talking about. I'm gonna just demonstrate how it's gonna work. When it's at regular height, it's gonna air out. Just like that. Woo! All right guys, so now we're gonna just gonna take out the upper control arms. Unbolt that bolt behind there, and then other one in the back. So I need to take out the bolt on the bottom of the strut there. So as you guys can see here, I'm like using a breaker bar, but it's very tight in there. Okay. So now I just gotta remove the bottom bolt from the strut. So now you wanna remove the cutter pin in there. This is how the cutter pin looked like. So an update that I managed to pop out the ball joint with the tool that I have. So I had to wait like another day and hopefully this one works out. So this is the tool that I bought originally which did not work. The throat is too, too short. This area here, too narrow as well. Then I had to rent it out this guy, the pickle for And this did not pop it out as well. It just ruined my ball joint, which I should have known better. And hopefully this one that I bought would work. So with this guy, very similar to the Honda, the Honda tool that was recommended to use in the instructions. Should have known better. We'll see if this one works. As you can see, at the different styles, much more wider here. So. Fits way better too. Woohoo! Oh! So, finally got it out. All the grease is coming out. This is no bueno. And also, broke the linkage to the height sensor. Everything is all out. So I guess I should remove it. Ah, uh, yeah! Oh, uh. So here's a comparison of the OEM on the left, and the TD Man. Obviously, I'm not gonna run that length on these guys. Obviously, there's a tolerance there. And of course, everything is Japanese. Thank God for Google Translate. So we're just gonna put it back to OEM. So it's easier. They will just mess around with the the adjustments later once I put on these bad boys. I'm gonna make sure it's somewhat OEM spec. Equal things out from the main body to the nut. So TD Man said to keep uh, keep for safety 70 from the body to the edge of the nut. Because these nuts. 
This is how it's supposed to look. Let me talk to you guys about this ball joints. See this OEM one, stationary one? You can spin it. On the TD Man, you can spin it here. So it's a different style. Two OEM specs, so now let's put it on. I'll wrap a rag around this area here where the shock mounts are so that it doesn't scratch all it right, up. we're going in. And obviously, it's not all bolted down, but this is how it looks. It's gonna compress the, the suspension. All right, this is how it looks here. So now we're just gonna tighten up the ball joint on this guy. All right, guys. So this is the final day of the install, day four. A lot of obstacles. Mainly, we just didn't have the tools that we needed to complete the work. You know, working with proper tools just lags the whole process. So yesterday, I had to um, uh, do things off camera. So I finally got things where I wanted to be. So here how it is. So mainly had an issue with the ball joint, but now the ball joint is seated. Then yesterday, I just um, installed the, the collar here. Connected there to the height sensor, tighten down the bolt. I had to um, use zip ties for the speed sensor cable. Should be okay. This is how it looks like with the TD Man upper control arms. After installing the upper arm, the wheels are towing in, so we gotta go take it into our alignment shop and get it aligned tomorrow. Hopefully, they can figure out how to align it because it's fairly elaborate parts. Yeah. I'll take you guys along. So right now, I'm just gonna go put on the wheels and wash up the car for tomorrow. All right, guys. And here's how it looks. So I want to take a quick shout out to the folks at Stage Auto for getting me alignment. If you guys in the W area, go ahead and hit them up. So overall, the installation was great. A couple of things is that you guys need the right tools to do the job efficient. I'll link the, the tools down below what I use. So highly recommend getting the T-Demand rear lower control arm for the TSX. Not only the craftsmanship is right on, but the adjustment on these guys is so good. These T-Demand lower control arms, the ball joint is a tapered end, so that means it does doesn't fit all the way into the, the seated aluminum knuckle as you would see the OEM. The reason being is that since the, the car can go so much lower, it would hit the knuckle. That's why the TD Man used these tapered ball joints for these adjustments. All right, guys, if you guys like the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you guys have any more comments about the TD Man Dark, let me know in the comments down below. And until next time, guys, he yeah, out. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed it. And don't forget guys to make sure you guys hit that like button. Take the time to comment. 